Happy Tuesday, DCS. Today is the 31st of March, 2020. I hope everyone was able to check out the blog um, website yesterday for the two articles that I posted this weekend, one of which was by Carla, and her topic is called How Do Whales Communicate? And the other one is by Jordan Gardet, and she wrote about 10 facts about red pandas. She had really, really cute pictures, and it's very interesting to figure out not only how, but why whales communicate as well. Please make sure that if your blog topic approval um, or article is due on Friday that you go ahead and uh, submit those if you can. Um, just another reminder that we're doing a live science class session tomorrow at 9.30 just for half an hour till 10. Um, we're not really going to be doing much work. It's more of touch bases, see how everyone is doing, kind of catch up and then kind of set the tone for how things are going to go for the following weeks. Um, I have included the information of how to access the Zoom uh, chat room, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. So for shout outs, thank you everyone who was able to already respond to the roll call. Uh, please, if you haven't done so, do so by Wednesday. Anybody from my homeroom in particular, um, if you have not done so by Wednesday, I will post out a list of students that haven't done so. And if I don't hear from you by Thursday, I will have to contact your parents just to make sure that you um, are able to at least get access to Google Classroom for important, uh, for important announcements. Okay, Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is an acronym that helps you remember the colors of the rainbow. And Patrick, Sophie, Quentin, and Karen were able to tell me what um, that was, and so it basically stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Okay, thank you. Oh, and Patrick Fisher as well. And then Sophie McCrary, she has joined the ranks of also building a Rube Goldberg machine. So good luck to all of you who are partaking in this really, really fun endeavor. So on the 25th and the 28th of March, we had uh, some birthdays. So we have Danny Webster's mom. Happy birthday, Mrs. Webster. And we had Delaney Silva. So what I'm going to do is I'm really paranoid that my downstairs neighbors might get annoyed at me because of all the stomping that I'm doing. So I'm going to still sing you the song, but I'm just going to do the clapping this time. Okay, so happy, happy birthday. It's your birthday. Let's celebrate from the garnet to the gold. Will it smile on your face from the human race and a party, party, party all over the place? Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. All right, um, moving on. So you guys had some I wonders. So from yesterday, and then we wanted to find out what um, germ, if any, is um, possible to be seen with the naked eye. So according to what I was able to find online, there are two different um, germs or bacteria that can actually be seen with the naked eye, even though you'd probably still need really, really good eyesight to do so. I um, think one of them can get as large as a grain of salt, which again, you could see a grain of salt with your naked eye, but it's still really, really tiny. And then another one can grow almost as large as three fourths of a millimeter wide. So if you look at a ruler and look how big a millimeter is, it's only three fourths of that. Then the science activity, um, I will, there was a little bit of a hiccup with the link that I sent you guys for the body system. So don't worry about that if you weren't able to access that video. Just go ahead and again, it's only optional. You can go ahead and get started with the two week project about creating a body systems pamphlet. Now, when you hear the word two weeks, you don't get intimidated. I'm not making it two weeks because it's a lot of work and it'll take a lot of sort of uh, input and energy and effort. It really doesn't. I just merely made it two weeks just to give you guys a really, really relaxed, easy timeline to do just a little bit each day. Okay, so it's a two week project, not because it needs two weeks, it can probably be finished in one day or two class sessions. But I'm giving you guys two weeks just so you guys can take it nice and easy and just kind of have fun with it. Okay, so for yesterday, if you weren't able to watch the video, that's okay. Just go ahead and get started with the pamphlet, okay? And the PDF directions and the sort of background information that you can use to help you with your pamphlet are attached in Google Classroom. All right, and then I hope you were all able to check the document that Coach P had me put up for you guys about the PE weekly activities. 
Okay, and another shout out, because I'm moving on to today's agenda, is Ava Perez. She submitted already her All Systems Go pamphlet. I am so proud of you, Ava. So great, great job for really getting on the ball of that, finishing it already. You did a wonderful job, and it looks wonderful. Okay, moving on to body systems. So Avery, she shared with me that the two systems she picked to do her pamphlet on are the respiratory and muscular systems. Moving on to some eye wonders. Okay, so Naomi wanted to find out, mm -hmm, what is the maximum number of white blood cells that can be in your body? So there are about 7,000 to 25,000 white blood cells in one single drop of blood. But in certain cases, like for example, people who have leukemia, they can have up to 50,000 white blood cells in a single drop of blood. Um, next one, Avery Haynes. She wanted to find out when were steatocystomas first discovered. And basically, steatocystomas are cysts, kind of like, almost like huge pimples that you get on your body. And that's that's kind of um, minimizing it to an extreme. So I don't know when the first one was discovered, but a rare disorder called steatocystoma multiplex uh, was first discovered in the year 1873. And I included a link in the agenda for that article if you do want to read it, Avery. I think you'd enjoy it. And last but not least, we have Patrick, who wanted to know, does hand sanitizer really kill 99.99% .99 of germs? Is it true? Well, the bad news is it's not exactly true. Killing 99.99% .99 of germs on whatever surface it comes into contact with is not what actually happens. So hand sanitizer is definitely not a substitute for washing your hands. If you have the option to wash your hands or the opportunity, always wash your hands because I know some people think hand sanitizer wash your hands you can do either one that is not true use hand sanitizer only if you are not able to wash your hands okay it's a sort of a good backup plan but it doesn't actually kill 99.99 percent of microbes it just sort of helps reduce the number of bacteria that can cause disease um, one really great experiment that Mr. Doherty sent me a link about, and I really wish I still had that link that I could show you guys, is that uh, this class did this experiment where they took a piece of bread and they rubbed it on unwashed, unhand sanitized hands, or unsanitized hands, and then they rubbed the piece of bread on hands that um, hand sanitizer was used on. And then they wash, and then they rub the piece of bread on hands that were actually washed. And then they put them in sort of this petri dish and let it grow for days to see how much sort of mold and bacteria they could find growing on it. And obviously, the one um, that wasn't washed or wasn't hand sanit or wasn't sanitized at all had a lot of bacterial growth. The one that was rubbed on a hand that was washed with water and soap had very, very few. And then the one that was rubbed on a hand that used hand sanitizer, even though it was less than the hand, uh, the piece of bread that was rubbed on an unwashed and unsanitized hand, it still had quite a bit of bacteria, especially compared to the bread that was rubbed on a cleanly Wash, cleanly washed, sorry, a hand that was washed with soap and water. So as you can see, using hand sanitizer is not a good substitute. It's more of just like a backup or an alternative in case you're not able to wash your hands. So always wash your hands. Okay, so the science activity, and this time I gave you a link, which I really hope works. Um, if it doesn't, I'll figure something out, but this one should be fine. You should not need a password or username for this. So basically what I want you to do is before watching the video, I want you to look at um, some discussion questions that you'll see if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen. It has some before video discussion questions. So kind of read through those questions and you don't even have to write them down. If you don't have to, just think about it to yourself. Okay, think about what your answers are and then watch the video. And then when you're done watching the video, you can kind of remind yourself, hmm, okay, what did I get right? What was I close? Or what was I just completely way off on? Okay, I will give you guys the answers to those before video questions tomorrow. After you're done with that, stop. There are options and different other things you could click on the website. And I know you might be tempted to do so, but please do not go on, okay? So the only thing that I want you to do 
is to watch the video, oh, sorry, answer the before video questions first, watch the video, and then kind of remind yourself how you did when you answer those questions, okay? Aside from that, um, all you have to do is just continue your pamphlet work, and then um, I would really love to hear what your guys' I wonders are and how you guys did with the before video questions, okay? So I really hope you guys enjoy that. All right, so on three, loud and proud. One, two, three, go Falcons. All right, guys, see you on Wednesday.